I'll talk to you about uh, an online confined space manure ventilation design tool uh, and tell you a little bit about what that does. So we'll start out by talking about what it is, how it works, what you can do with it, an overview of the capabilities of the tool, talk about pit and barn features that can be modeled, show some example simulation results, and talk about where to find training resources to learn to use this. So the online tool is a web-based computer simulation program for custom designing manure pit safety ventilation systems. And I've underlined safety there because this is really meant for positive pressure safety manure pit ventilation, not the typical um, constantly running negative pressure ventilation systems that may be put in place uh, common in some swine, swine manure facilities. This is just for safety event ventilation where you have a, a portable fan that's brought in and placed into the manure pit uh, and fresh air is, is blown in. It's typically going to be used by manure pit designers and field engineers, not, not casual users. It can simulate standalone manure pits but can also simulate the airflow through barns that are attached above manure storages. And those include tunnel ventilated, naturally ventilated, or mechanically cross ventilated barns. Some of the assumptions that went into this, the simulation is based on ideal conditions. Gas monitoring is still necessary, so be safe. It assumes uniform initial pit gas concentrations throughout the manure pit. So in reality, you may have uh, non-uniform conditions where you have areas and low-lying spaces that may have higher concentrations, maybe in corners or places that don't get much air, air ventilation. This assumes that whatever you set for the initial conditions fills the entire manure pit. It also assumes that the airspace up above in the barn is pure air, so there's no gas up there when the uh, simulation starts. It assumes the manure pit is empty, or has less than six inches of manure remaining in it. There's no agitation and there's no generation of gas from the remaining manure in those manure storages. So how does it work? You go to a, a simple online entry form and enter the airflow parameters for the pit fan and for the barn fans. You enter the initial gas concentrations and you build the manure pit and the barn by just entering dimensions into the entry boxes. The online tool configures a 3D computer-aided drafting or CAD model based on your input. So this is one of the benefits of using this tool is you don't have to know how to use CAD to generate this geometry. Computational fluid dynamics or CFD simulation is then performed using your CAD model and the airflow parameters you entered. So another benefit, you don't have to know how to use computational fluid dynamics to do this. There's a predefined model that's already set up. It reconfigures based on your CAD geometry, and then it runs a simulation using your airflow parameters and the gas concentrations. Results get generated for your simulation, and we'll take a look at some of those. So some of the things you can do with it, you can easily create many different configurations of manure pits and barns. You can run the CFD simulation for the pit plus barn and determine how long the pit needs to be ventilated to evacuate toxic gases prior to human entry. And you can also look at the uh, results up above the barn floor and determine where hazardous gases are likely to flow through the barn airspace. And this enables you to perform what-if scenarios to test different manure pit and barn uh, ventilation configurations and see how the uh, conditions might be improved. So as I mentioned, the online tool makes it possible to uh, quickly configure lots of different configurations of manure pits. There's a typical uh, rectangular tank, but you can also do L-shaped, T-shaped, custom-sized tanks or custom shapes. Uh, the covers can be slotted or solid. We can put in divider walls, and we can also put in obstructions such as sand mounds that commonly occur if sand bedding is used in a dairy, dairy barn, for instance. This slide shows some common uh, simple pit configurations that were created using the online tool. You can see different lengths and widths, um, different combinations of 
outlet openings in walls or uh, access openings in the top of the cover. So as mentioned, we also uh, simulate airflow through the barn located above the pit. So this shows a simple tunnel ventilated barn. This is a cross ventilated barn. And this is a naturally ventilated barn, ventilated by wind. So we'll take a look at some of those uh, in a little bit more depth to show you what can be configured for those models. You need a login to access the online tool. The website link is ventdesign.agsafety.psu.edu. There's also a slide at the end of this that has that link in uh, larger letters. And I think it should probably be available in the information you got for this webinar. So if you go to the website, down at the bottom here, there's a link, click to apply. Uh, it's simple, just wants to know your name, uh, address, phone number, anything you can give us with that email address. You create a login and a password, and you'll get access within a few days as soon as it's been approved. <laughs> as mentioned, there's a, a simple data entry form on the web interface. So from here, you put in your pit fan CFM, which is either rated or measured. Um, you have the choice to use ducted fresh air inlet for the pit fan, or it'll simulate recirculating flow if, uh, if you don't have an inlet duct. So if the fan was in the middle of the building, um, it would simulate flow going through the fan, through the pit, and then back up through the fan if it draws that exhaust air back into the inlet. And you can see we also, uh, enter the initial concentrations for hydrogen sulfide, carbon dioxide, methane, and ammonia gases here. If you don't use, yet, uh, hydrogen sulfide by default has to be turned on. That's what the tool's really for. Um, but you can put in values of zero for the other gases if you're not interested in those. It doesn't really make a difference. And again, the user form is in a very simple. We just put in uh, thickness of the cover, length, width, depth, and then go down and choose the various options that you want to enable and define those. We'll take a look at those options here. So as mentioned, we can have multiple outlets in the cover. You just define the size and the placement just using simple measurements that you could read off a drawing. Slotted flooring is, is possible, either a completely slotted floor or with uh, various regions that you define where they're located, what the slot sizes are, and how many there are. You can put in divider walls in multiple directions, combinations of them, and we can put in uh, openings in those divider walls, which are commonly used for pit leveling. They can be round or rectangular openings. You can also put in pump-out annexes, which are typically located along the outside wall of the manure pit. Uh, we can put five in each wall, I believe, um, define the size and shape of those and the depth, and we have the capability of putting the pit safety fan in one of those annexes through the cover of it. We can also define uh, obstructions, such as the sand mound shown here, again, using very simple data entry. You can also put a pit fan out outlet elbow on the, on the bottom of the pit fan. So in some cases, you'll have a uh, safety ventilation fan where the fan might be located outside the door of the building, and you run a duct or a long hose to direct that airflow down into the manure pit. So you can simulate that as well. Take a look at some of the barn features. So this is a typical tunnel ventilated barn. See the barn up above, under barn manure pit below. We have a fully slotted cover on that pit. See the pit fan is located there in this example. The barn fans are represented by um, a cover put over the outside of that barn. You define the length and width of that, and you put in the total flow for the barn represented by that surface. Same thing for the other end. It's assumed to be completely open. You define the size of that opening, the length and the width. <clears throat> Cross-ventilated barn has a lot more options, much more configurable. Uh, you can define a fan or a bank of fans and any number of those in each wall of the building. You can define sidewall inlet slot opening uh, width that's typically right at the eaves. 
You can define block offs that are put there to prevent short circuiting of air that would enter the building and get exhausted by the fans immediately. You can define windows in all four, wheel, uh, all four walls of the building. Ceiling inlet slots are possible, as well as inlet baffles and openings in those baffles to allow more fresh air into those buildings. And the naturally ventilated barn is shown here. So for this, uh, the ideal situation would be when the wind was perpendicular to the sidewall of the barn. We actually run two simulations with the online tool for you automatically. By default, we use a wind at 45 degrees uh, positive and negative from the perpendicular direction. So we're simulating the worst case scenarios so that you can figure out what you've got to deal with there. So we assume that the uh, curtain sidewalls are open and you can define the height and the, uh, the opening, opening width for those. You can also include a ridge vent, gable sheathing, end wall sheathing, and put in the doors there and define those if you, if you want to. And you can also put obstructions. Uh, two buildings can be attached on each wall of the, of the barn. So if you have something like a silo or a shop that's attached and would obstruct airflow from the wind, you could put those into the model and see how that changes your results. So running the simulation is simple. Once you've built the uh, geometry, you can check the geometry by generating actually a 3D PDF file from Adobe, portable document format, and you can actually look at these, uh, rotate the models, turn things on and off, look inside them, and make sure you build what you think you have. Once you're satisfied with it, you click the Save New Study button here to solve the simulation. Simulations may take several hours depending on how complicated your geometry is and how large things are. But you don't have to wait. Uh, you'll get email that tells you when your results are ready and you can log back in to view those. Once you've logged back in, you go to the uh, View Results tab of the web page and click on the View Results button. From there, you'll see uh, a list of available files that are generated. So the online tool generates animated cut plots showing gas movement through the barn and pit at various locations for each of the gases that you put into the simulation. It also generates an Excel file that has uh, gas decay curves for the barn and pit airspace, and I'll show you that a little later here. So an example here is a hydrogen sulfide contour animation for the front mid plane of the manure pit. So we see a nice color plot that comes up here. We have a universal legend on the right side here that you use for each gas. So because this is hydrogen sulfide, we use the first one here that shows us what level of gas is being shown on that plot from zero to 100 parts per million. You can put something in higher than 100 parts per million, but because that's the immediately dangerous to life and health value, anything higher than that is automatically going to show up as red. It simplifies the levels that are used in these cup plots greatly. And as I mentioned, these are at four different locations in the pit and barn. So the first one is at uh, one quarter of the width of the barn. The next one is at the center line of the manure pit fan. There's one at mid-depth of the manure pit. And there's one cut plot shown six inches above the floor level of the barn. And that's done because that's the typical lower level for smaller animals or animals that might be lying down where their breathing space would be. Here's an example of the animated results for that. Uh, a typical 40 foot by 100 foot long barn with a pit fan at one end. And uh, what you're seeing is the red is the high level of gas, 100 parts per million, 100 parts per million or higher of hydrogen sulfide. The blue is air. So we can see that uh, the gas is being exhausted from the manure pit, carried out by the barn fans on the left side. But as it happens, there is a dangerous zone that appears in the barn on the left, left hand side. So that might be something that you'd use to, to, uh, to corral your animals to the other end of the barn, or you could decide to remove them for you know, really conservative safety. As I mentioned, we also get an Excel file that's generated. There's a tab in, there are tabs in the Excel file for each gas that's used in the simulation for both the pit and the barn. So this shows the uh, maximum concentration of hydrogen sulfide 
anywhere in the manure storage over time. It's not at a single point. This could be in a corner of the pit. It could be at mid-depth. You need to use this decay curve with the animated results files to interpret what's really going on in your simulations. We also show the time needed to require the PEL or the permissible exposure limit. We show it for 10 parts per million and for one part per million. These are levels uh, 10 used to be the OSHA limit. One was uh, NIOSH or ACGIH, I believe. If you want to look for a different value, you can look on the right-hand side there. The data is actually included. You can scroll down and find any level you want to find. We also see this for the barn airspace. So we see the maximum concentration anywhere inside the barn. We see the maximum here is 120. We started with 120, so that makes sense. And we also see the amount of time that the airspace in the barn is greater than that 20 part per million ceiling that I think Mike and Rob both mentioned earlier. We also see oxygen replenishment curves, both for the manure pit and for the barn. And this shows how, how much time it takes to ventilate the manure storage and the barn together to reach a level of 19.5% by volume oxygen, which is the minimum that you want to have before going back into that space. As mentioned, here is a, a list of uh, training modules that are available on the website. You go to the website that's linked there at the top, ventdesign.agsafety.psu.edu. From that page, there's a link, information about this online tool, and if you click that, you can find <clears throat> seven um, training modules that have been developed. They're YouTube videos you can download. You can also download uh, PDF files of these or a user manual. And uh, the first module is an overview, very similar to what I've given you here today. The second module teaches you how to build standalone manure pits with examples. The third is for building tunnel ventilated barns. The fourth module shows you how to configure cross ventilated barns above manure pits. Module five is a student project. So it gives you a design scenario. You can enter the values that are there into the online tool, run a simulation, and then go back and check the results against what's shown in module five to make sure you're doing it right. Module six is naturally ventilated barns. And uh, module seven is a student project that tests that you're entering the information correctly and getting the right results for naturally ventilated barns. That concludes my part of the presentation. I thank you for listening.